Good morning, good people of Diecast Land. Uh, this is me responding to <laughs> the latest challenge in a long line of challenges. And this is a good friend of mine. And I know he's a, a good friend to a lot of you. He's a super good guy. He's very free with his time. Uh, and as such, I've got a lot of time for David Beeson. He put out a challenge following not on the heels of Matchbox Man HW24. And this challenge is to show us your Matchbox. Um, it doesn't matter what scale. It doesn't matter what time period, what condition. And so I'm going to start with my bonus piece first. And I absolutely adore this. I had one of these as a child. There he is pulling in there. Let's get him squared up. This one. The Matchbox Car Transporter. There we go. Get him as close as we can. It's immaculate. In the terms that the casting is solid and as sound as a pound. Uh, all the parts are working, uh, the hydraulics are still firm and resistant and I picked this one up off eBay uh, fairly recently but I bought this in mind with a full restoration. I don't know whether I'll go with the original colour scheme but we'll try and detail it out as highly as we can, you know, things like pick out the headlights mirrors, uh, battery boxes, air tanks, that sort of thing. So we'll take this old cast in and bring it into the modern age, I hope. But I can't do that until my eyes allow it. So that'll have to sit on the to-do list. But yeah, so that, that's my bonus piece. And that's very, very old and very, very original. And apart from the paint, it's all there, um, just tilt you around there. Usually the tailgates are broken off these. You can see how, how good a condition that is. Yeah, usually these tailgates, they're uh, in a poor state or the tab's been broke off so they don't sit right. But you can see that is, apart from cosmetic, it's all there and it's all fantastic. So we'll leave him in there. I'm, I'm really happy with that purchase and I don't think I paid more than, oh, I don't know, five English pounds for that. So compared to what they're going for today, that is pretty darn uh, good. Okay, so I'm going to tilt down actually, I keep to and fro in here. So let's crack on then. I bought this and I'm calling it one piece, although it's two. There we go. Love this. Came from a five pack. And the reason I bought the five pack was this combo. Colour match is lovely. The tops are great. Got a nice camping trailer there. With water cans on the side there. And digging equipment. Look at the detail on that, would you? I mean, that is marked out to high heaven uh, I think that's where the license plate it says uh, is, that, is that campy there's some spades on the side it's everything you need for a bit of action and adventure more water canisters or fuel canisters this I believe uh, there's a boat on top look suggestion of a boat not very detailed that bit but I do believe this is like a camping trailer a trailer tent maybe even but yeah uh, I love things that tow, but I haven't got so many of them. But I'm addressing that, so he sits nice. And the towing vehicle itself. Uh, Arrow Flint, it says on the side. As you can see, this is immaculate, but it wants to be, because I've had this about a year, I think. Uh, and it's a Ford Bronco. But yeah, absolutely love that. Uh think it's a fantastic little little combo so we'll leave him oops 
we'll leave him up alongside the, the transporter. Now let's go to the weird and the wacky. Saw this, had to have it. A six wheeled NASA lunar landing module. Maybe a Mars rover. I think that's the next mission, isn't it? To try and get man on Mars. So this is this is a big old unit. And uh, it's quite quirky. I love the shape of it. I love the six wheels. I think that's great. I really do. I like that imme uh, immensely. Let's turn it that way so we can see it on the wheel. So yeah, so that's one wacky piece. And we go to another wacky historical piece because where I was brought up in a fishing town of Grimsby and the seaside town of Cleethorpes we used to have one of these on the beach to take people for rides both on the edge of the water and into the water because this is the amphibious vehicle as we know it in England the D-U-K-W-D and that's uh, Botesque on the front look as you imagine for trying to cut through the waves big powerful plant i think it was a cummins um there's some handrails up the back and a viewing saloon <laughs> in fact there's the propeller but yeah so this this one of these was actually um a part of my childhood this one's luxurious because it's got a roof on it as never did and it was proper ex-military just used as a a leisure and pleasure craft and as a small child it was exciting to me and I imagine the magic of driving on the land and the next thing you're about chugging out to sea one life ring on the front there I don't think uh, I don't, don't think that'd be allowed today but anyway different times uh, a military piece commission for pleasure craft okay I should have showed this last time. You saw it on an early Matchbox case, which was very heavy with Jurassic Park vehicles. This is beautifully done. Um, the details in the cast in there with the front winch on and the lights and that grill. Great movie series. Own every one of them. Nice bit of fun. Nice detail spare. Yeah, I like this piece immensely. And as with Jurassic Park, they do like their reality vehicles. So here's a Jeep Wrangler, of course. And maybe I should have showed that one. Well, I wanted to. I've got a few Jurassic Park Jeeps, but you know how these things are. You get sorting out and you overlook stuff. Goodness gracious me. Um, up on display on my car, well, one of my car walls, I've got about 200 fairly new Matchbox pieces as they are. So, this was another one from a five pack, and the subject matter is there for all to see. Good old moon eyes. And it's a beautiful thing. Very basic, but the paint's deep, and uh, it's just a beautiful old, old time American truck. I'm going to say Ford at the risk of looking silly. And it is a 56 Ford pickup. And again, I believe this came as part of a five pack. And that's what drew me to it. Uh, so you can just see over the top of me uh, truck there. Look, Moon Eyes card on there. I think we all like a bit of Moon Eyes. We've all got a piece or two. Or many, many more. So... What we got there? One, two, three, four, five, and the bonus piece. So we've got 15 more to do. Let's whiz through them. Showed this recently as part of my wagon challenge. This is a beauty. Uh, it's an upgrade from the basic line. Mr. David John, you'll hear that name quite a bit in this one. He sent me this, and it's probably my finest example of a, a wagon. Metal on metal, oh, very, very heavy piece. Um, beautiful old suggestion of a woody. 
And what we got there, the Oldsmobile Vista Cruiser. Oh yeah. Is that yeah, a couple of black doggies in the back there. So I'm suggesting they're Westland Terriers. There we go. Now this is a cracking example of a Land Rover Defender. I mean that's Explore Your World MBX. I would suggest with the trees on this is a forestry commissioner. You know, one of the tree surgeons go out and cut branches down and look for Dutch elm disease and all them horrible things that decimate a forest. Ladders up to the top because on the top there, look, we've got various toolboxes, petrol cans or water cans, various tools suggested there. I don't know why they've suggested them in a clear orange. Nice lighting bar on the top there. But that, there you go, Michael. I think that's a cracking example of a, a Land Rover Defender. I really do like that a lot. So I'll give him a moment in the spotlight. There we go. Forever America. Okay, this is a Matchbox livery one. This is more of a new one I bought myself while out and about. Uh, this says Greyhound bus to me. And if I think about bus or coach in America, my thoughts... And I guess most other people's would turn to the Greyhound bus company. Again, I'd like to go on one. I'd like to take a road trip on one. Just to say I've done it. I'm sure there's better modes of transport. But once again, there's a certain romance attached to the notion of doing that. So... Beautiful, beautiful RV unit. Um, love RVs. We call them mobile homes in the UK. And this is a beauty. I've seen a few of these. I own about four RVs, mostly due to Mix 67 and Fire and Food sending me a few. These pop down at the back to reveal... Uh, with that check plate, I suggest a storage garage for a couple of scooters. There's a saloon in there and a kitchenette, you can see. Now, I always get confused. I think it was Mick that sent me this one. Because I'm going to show the other one straight away. But, yeah. Again, the open road. Uh, I used to ride a motorbike, but I can't profess to be in a motorbike nut job. But... I'd love to take one across Route 66 and do it that way. I think so long as you've got a good air conditioning unit, I think going across the Arizona, Arizona desert, uh, somehow that appeals to me. Who knows why we get these notions in our head. I think it's part of your background. I think it's what we, what we see. And there's a different version. And the same casting, again... The, the colour schemes Matchbox put on these are funky. Look at that nose. Beautiful. Reminds me of a Mac. I know Mac don't do camper vans, but... But these things are beautiful. Uh, I'm going to put him down there. And we're getting... A right old collection of vehicles here together. So we're going to the last ten. There we go. James Bond's Lotus Esprit. I think we know this the world over. This is one I picked up for a couple of pennies from a car boot sale. Uh, it's in good nick. But actually I've got a brand new piece as part of about a five. Five piece Lotus Esprit set I've put together now. There we go, a bit more arranging. We're looking like a motorway service is down here at the minute. Back to David Johns. 34 Plymouth cop car. Oh. 
How do I love that shape? Again, evocative in my mind of, oh, I don't know, Prohibition, Boston Tea Party, that sort of time period. Eh, Babyface, Babyface Nelson. <laughs> Why have I got that name in my head? I think he was a wrestler, wasn't he? But yeah, all the uh, all the great gangsters <laughs> whose name escapes me because <laughs> we never had that sort of thing in here. We had the craze, but they want these uh, great scenes, shootouts between gangsters and Keystone cops. Again, old black and white movies, sort of glamorising it as a kid. It stuck in my memory, and that's all really. I don't profess to be a um, an expert. <laughs> what was the comedy movie with uh, Jodie Foster on? It was the it was the one that broke her. Won it when she first when she first came onto the scene. They had their cream splits, cream splodge guns. That was a comical take on gangsters. I forget. Anyway. Next three, play, uh, next three pieces, also Mr. David Johns. Uh, again, this evokes beautiful 50s, 60s America to me. The Hudson Hornet. Want the world a tougher place, but a fairer place back then. You know, so long as you kept your nose clean, you was allowed to be who you wanted to be. You didn't have mass school children. Marching down the street, telling you how you should be. Eh? And they call it democracy. Eh? I fear when our generation are gone, we'll be marched headlong into 1984. Because kids aren't taught history anymore. And history is important. If you don't know where you come from, how do you know where you're going from? Uh, going to? And uh, even a bit of religious studies to teach you morality. But now they've slowly taken them things off the curriculum and replaced them with social studies. A.K.A. a rife breeding ground for thick, uneducated children. In the main, don't get me wrong, there's Brightons out there. But they call it education. I call it grooming. And it's a shame. It's a shame because after this generation's gone, I do not know what will become of this place on any side of the pond or any part of the world. I've lost, I've lost me will. I really have. It's all part of the plan. I don't know. I'm not going to say no more. I'm upsetting myself now. But yeah, yeah. History and RA replaced by social studies which are good for what nothing other than political parties arming kids with all the wrong information and all the wrong morals hey antifa go do yourself a favor grow up there's good little boys and girls talk about warriors with no just cause anyway i'm still going on shut it soul shut it anyway <laughs> David Johns again, second Hudson on it, and the third Hudson on it, done out as a beautiful, beautiful fire chief here. Again, I'm not going to dwell on it. These are just beautiful things to me, and without David's assistance, I wouldn't have any of these, and I love them dearly. Old school America. Right, so top five. Uh, let's bring a bit of quality to this as well. So we've got a Datsun 510, which Mick67 has grown to love because he knows that they look like a Ford Escort. And Mr. Gransden is the, I'm declaring him the world's leading authority on Ford Escorts and other great British motors. Look at the detail on that. And that's all picked out in diecast. There's no plastic on that. That is fantastic. So what we got there, we got a spare wheel, we got a fuel canister, maybe a toolbox, and you can see that this is a rally car, but I would suggest 
the long distance ones like the Paris Dakar. Beautiful casting, well equipped for a mainline piece. Anybody's got to be proud of that. That is, that for me is the gold standard by Matchbox. Well done, Matchbox. I think we'd all be happy owning pieces like this. And there she sits. So, let's finish with my favourite, well I say one of my favourite five, that's number five. This little beauty. Love the accurate black wheels. I think they're a joy. The colour's fantastic. Look at the way the tampos suggest the 3D lighting effect there. I think that's very clever. That's coming in now. And for the sake of a little tampo, I think that's great. We can see the Porsche badge just on the bonnet there in scale. Nothing I don't like about this. And same sort of detail, high quality on the back. And this is the Porsche Cayman which is known as a poor man's Porsche. Well, if that's a poor man's Porsche, I'd be happy to be a poor man because you're still looking, what, about 60 grand or more? But yeah, love that piece. So we come to my top three and Matchbox I always get this right. Hey, an E-Type Jag. Oh my word. That's an E-Type Jaguar. There's no W in it, remember, folks. Ignorance is not an excuse. And there we go, 1961. So that tells a story. But, again, like a split screen, a split rear windscreen Corvette, you know, these are some of the most iconic shapes in the world. Look at that bonnet. It goes to infinity and beyond. Can you imagine the power plant that's under there? And obviously, a lot of these were done in British Racing Green to follow on from the legendary Bentleys. This is a nice metallic blue casting. I like the complimentary tan interior as well. Again, that's Matchbox doing Jaguar a good service there. And I would suggest Jaguar wouldn't accept anything less than fine detailing. Why would you make a good, why would you make a good looking car look rubbish? The answer is you wouldn't. Number two, Mr. David Johns. Uh, more a premium. I do believe this one has opening door features. So these are the ones that come. And we haven't got just a lump of plastic for a steering wheel. That has got the proper designed wheel on there. Again, nice tan interior. Beautiful wheels. Again, that fine detail. Oh, this is my idea of a Porsche. I particularly love the old model, the Targa. I know when you see the Belgian police and the German police, the police eye, uh, bombing up and down their highways, they're usually in open top Porsche Targas with a roll bar and the, the police lights. They're, they're actually a joy to be old. You know, you want a car that's going to keep in the chase, then you go for a big old Porsche. No expense spared. And there we go. The Porsche 911 Turbo. But I particularly love the old style Tigers. Oh, how beautiful. And then we come to me. Last piece. So this will actually be piece 21. Or if you want to call that two pieces, Piece 22. And there we go. Boom. Look at that. Mr. David Johns yet again. My matchbox man at the top. Isn't that beautiful? Real riders on there, rubber. Doors open, but I'm not going to embarrass myself by trying to prise it open. Or shall we? Shall we? We'll get Mr. Craft Knife on it again, because I'm not one for... There we go. Click, that's a nice reassured sound. Oh, we don't want to damage no paint. 
There we go. Oh, no, 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 no. Get on. So if this is painful to watch, like I say, my depth perception is out the window at the minute. So there we go with his doors open. Beautifully detailed inside. There's texture and different colours on them seats. So we know Matchbox have gone the extra mile here and that is beautiful. Chrome base, the bane of my life. Oh dear. Let me see if I can see this off camera. I'm struggling folks, I do apologise. And I've got... Uh, I've got 57 Fordman screaming at me, Sol, it's a Ford, it's a Ford. And you'd be right, I can pick that much out of it. Shut them doors up. Quality, quality piece. Matchbox premium line, you know, comes in the package, box underneath it, if you so desire, of which I've kept. But again, absolutely fantastic. So... That's the end of this challenge. Um, and that's dedicated to my good friend, Mr. David Beeson. And thank you once again, David Johns. Mix 67, Fireman Food 1988 for helping me along. And there we go. We have got a plethora of cars. 2022, 20, depending on however you want to count them up. But yeah, happy days. So, enjoy the rest of your day. I should think this will be early to mid-evening in America by the time I've uploaded this to my European cousins. Enjoying your dinner hour or at tea time. Everybody have a great day and I'll speak to you real soon. Bye-bye for now.